In this video, we're going to show you the basics of building a circuit in Sonnet, analyzing it, and plotting the results. The circuit we're going to build is a simple folded double stub notch filter. It's composed of a through line with two identical quarter wave stubs placed about a quarter wave apart. And they're folded to save space, but that introduces coupling to the through line, making it a challenge to design without an electromagnetic simulator. The 3D view shows you that the circuit is a simple microstrip configuration. The filter trace metal is placed on top of an alumina substrate and a thick layer of air is above it. Like all Sonnet projects, our circuit is inside a six-sided metal box. All electromagnetic effects due to the metal box, including coupling to the sidewalls and any cavity resonances, will be included in the simulation. Okay, to get started, we start with the Sonnet taskbar and click New Geometry. This opens a 2D view of a blank project. This is a top view of your circuit, and these four edges are the four sidewalls of the analysis box. And over here is what is called the Quick Start Guide. Since we're going to draw the circuit manually, I just click on Next. The Quick Start Guide helps you when you are first learning Sonnet by reminding you of things you need to do, and it will place a check mark next to items which you finished. And if you don't know how to do something, you can click on the item and it will give you instructions. So let's set the units. I go to Circuit, Units. Once you set the units, everything in your project will use these units. For example, if you change your length units to microns, all your dimensions and measurements would be in microns. We're going to use mils for our length units. Notice now that the Specify Units is checked in the Quick Start Guide. The next item on the list is to specify the dielectric layers. So I double click on the lower layer in the Stack Up Manager, which represents the substrate and it's going to be Illumina, which we can pick out of the library. And I type in 20 mils, and that's it for the substrate. The top dielectric is the air above the substrate. I double-click the top dielectric, so I type in a name, and then set the thickness. Remember, the top of the analysis box is metal, so you want it far enough away from the circuit so it doesn't couple to it. So I'll type in 200 mils, which is 10 times the dielectric thickness, so that should be good enough. The dielectric constant is already set to 1, so I can just click OK. So the next thing to set is the cell size and the box size. The cell size is something really important for you to understand when using Sonnet. The analysis engine is going to take all your polygons and snap them to an underlying grid, which shows up as these dots on your layout. For example, if you have a polygon that is 12 mils wide and your cell size is 10 mils, it will get rounded down to 10 mils wide. We set the cell size along with the box size using the circuit box menu. Now I happen to know that all our polygon dimensions are multiples of 20 mils. So we can set our cell size to 20 by 20, 10 by 10, 5 by 5, etc. The smaller we set it, the more accurate the simulation, but the slower the analysis time. We're going to use a cell size of 10 mils in both directions. And we want to make sure that the box is large enough for our circuit. And actually, since the box walls are metal conductors, we want to make sure they are far enough away from the circuit so they don't couple to the circuit. For this circuit, we're going to use a box of 330 by 200 mils. Next, we need to specify the loss of the metal traces. We'll want the metal to sit directly on top of the alumina substrate. So I right-click here and select Add Metal Tech Layer. A tech layer allows you to define a group of objects with common properties, in this case, the metal loss. So I type in a name for the tech layer, and now we need to define a new metal type with the loss of half ounce copper. So I click on New. Now I could type in the conductivity of the metal here, but I'm going to choose the metal from the library. So I click on the library button and choose copper. Then type the thickness of 0.7 mils. Notice now there's a rectangle in the stack up view showing where my trace metal is going to go. Now we're going to add the metal polygons using the toolbox. First make sure the metal icon is selected. We're going to start with the through line, which is just a simple rectangle. So I click on the rectangle icon, then just click and drag. Notice how the status bar shows both the absolute and relative coordinates of my cursor as I move the mouse. Now let's add one of the folded stubs. Since the stub is not a rectangle, we'll use the Add Polygon button. Once again, the status bar shows the cursor coordinates as I move the mouse. I just click one point at a time until I'm done. Now, if you make a mistake, you can use the handles to stretch the polygon. 
or you can use reshape mode to move a single point or multiple points at a time. So for instance, I can move just this one point. Notice that the mitered bend shows a fill pattern that doesn't match the diagonal edge. This is because we are using staircase subsections and the fill pattern is showing how the EM simulator will treat the polygon. We can improve the fit by reducing the cell size. Let me go back and decrease the cell size. I'll change it to 5x5. Five five. Now watch what happens to the diagonal edge when I click Apply. The fit to the diagonal edge is better. Now I'll change it to 1x1 one one, and the fit gets better. But the smaller the cell size, the slower the simulation. So I'm changing it back to 10x10 10 10 just so we can have a quicker answer. So that's the first stub. Since the second stub is identical to the first, but just rotated, we can create it using a combination of copy and rotate. I type 180 and tell it to rotate around the box center. Then check Make a Copy. Now, watch when I click on Rotate. It rotates a copy 180 degrees. Now let's add the ports. I click on the port icon in the toolbox. Ports always get connected to the edge of a polygon, so I click on this edge for port 1 and on this edge for port 2. Okay, the next item on the Quick Start Guides list is reference planes, but notice there is an asterisk next to it. This means it is optional. For this simple tutorial, I'll skip that step because it's optional. So we set up our frequency sweep using analysis setup. So I type in a start frequency of 1 GHz and a stop frequency of 10 GHz and then just click OK. OK, now our project is ready to be analyzed. So I save the project first, give it a name, then to analyze it, press the Analyze button on the toolbar. It's a small project so it analyzes quickly. To view a graph of the results, press the graph icon on the toolbar. This gives us a plot of dB of S11 versus frequency. Now we want to add S21 to the graph. I double click on dB of S11 and then add dB of S21 to the selected list. So we can now see our notch between 5 and 6 GHz. Okay, that's it. There's a lot more you can do with Sonnet, but this should be enough to get you started. There's also lots of written tutorials that come with the software and a more in-depth manual that covers many advanced features. But if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.